Um, today we are going to look at cells and levels of organization. This is going to be a series of topics ranging from ZJC up to all level. And today we are going to look at a ZJC concept on plant and animal cells. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to describe the structure of a plant and animal cell. You should be able to draw it, label it, state the functions of the different features of the cell. You should also be able to list similarities between plant and animal cells as well as the differences between these two cells. That's what we aim to achieve by the end of this lesson. So let's start by looking at the structure of a plant cell. This is the structure of a plant cell. It consists of a cell wall, cell membrane, a nucleus, the cytoplasm, and other special organelles such as the chloroplast, the mitochondria, and the vacuole. Now, let's proceed and look at the functions of these different features or the different components of a cell. For this, it's much easier for you to construct a table with two columns. One on one end, you write the component of the feature and then on the other side, you write the function. Let's start with the cell wall. The cell wall is a rough and rigid, non-living outer layer on the plant cells. It is made up of a carbohydrate called cellulose. The cell wall is quite, is quite flexible and it gives the plant cell a regular shape. Then it also protects the substances inside the cell. For example, from mechanical damage. The rigid cell wall also provides support to the cell. But you can bend it without easily breaking it simply because of its uh, flexibility. Then the cell membrane. The cell membrane on the other side is living and it's a very thin layer which is partially permeable and it surrounds the cytoplasm. Its main functions are to contain the contents of the cytoplasm together. And because it is partially permeable, it is the one that controls the movement of substances into and out of the cell. That's our cell membrane. The chloroplast. The chloroplast is an organelle which is found mostly on plant cells. It contains a green pigment called chlorophyll. And chlorophyll is the one that is responsible for the absorption of sunlight, which is going to be required for the process of making food. So plants make their food in the chloroplasts. So we can say the chloroplasts are actually the factory or the manufacturing plant of a plant. And the plants make their own food using a process called 
photosynthesis and we are going to start looking at this under nutrition okay so that's basically the function of the chloroplast that's where food is going to be made by the plants and this food is very essential for all living organisms the mitochondria is another special organelle this one is responsible for producing energy all living organisms need energy for various purposes and you are going to we are going to look at this topic on energy again later on so under the physics section but inside plants as well as inside animal cells we have the mitochondria which are responsible for generating that energy then plant cells have a large i'm sure you can see that it's quite large covering almost the whole inner part of the cell and it is permanent which means it's not going to go anywhere it's always there Vacuum. The vacuum is basically a fluid filled sac. The fluid is called cell sap. Cell sap. That's the name of the fluid inside there. It's cell sap. And this cell sap comprises of salts and sugars which are dissolved in water when this vacuole is full there's going to be pressure which is going to be generated which acts outwards and that pressure is the one that is responsible for keeping the cell rigid or rotated later on you're going to when you consider transport later on you're going to see how gain of water and loss of water by the vacuum will affect the plants okay then we also have the cytoplasm the cytoplasm is a jelly like component inside the cell and it contains a lot of the organelles and the other substances. Its main function of the cytoplasm, that is the site where all chemical reactions of the cell are going to occur. There are so many different uh, reactions which take place, reactions which are responsible for your growth and all that. So all different reactions they take place inside the cytoplasm. Finally, but not necessarily the least, we have the nucleus. This is the control center of the cell. Which means this nucleus, which is embedded in the cytoplasm, this is where all the instructions of the cell which controls all the activities of the cell. The instructions come from the nucleus. So the nucleus is the one that contains the genetic material of the organism or of the cell, which we normally refer to as the DNA, which consists of chromosomes. It's going to be found in the nucleus. So basically, that's the function of the nucleus to control all the activities of the cell. So basically, this is our plant cell. Now we want to look at the structure of an animal cell. So basically, this is an animal cell. Though the shape of an animal cell is irregular. It consists of a cell membrane. Remember, we said the cell membrane is a thin layer which surrounds the cytoplasm holding the contents of the cell together and it is also living okay then this is our cytoplasm 
which we say is jelly-like. This is where all the chemical reactions in a cell occur. This is these are organelles, and this is our the control center, the nucleus, which contains the genetic information, which controls all the activities of the cell. So basically, this is our animal cell. So you can compare and contrast between the plant cell, which you saw previously, in this animal cell. So we now want to look at the last part of our objectives. We now want to look at the similarities as well as the differences between plant cells. Let's start off with the similarities because they are quite simple. Okay? All cells consist of the basic units, the cell membrane, the cytoplasm, and the nucleus. All these components, you find them as in the animal cell as well as in the plant cell. Let's now look at the differences. Okay, again, to make the information easier to read and a bit clearer, it's much easier to present that information in table form. Under the physics section, I'm sure you've learned how to make tables. So, this is a table of differences between plant and animal cells. So, we now want to look at the components where these cells are different. For starters, let's start off with their shape. We said a plant cell, because of the cell wall, it has a regular shape. But the, that of an animal is irregular. Cell wall. Plant cells have a cell wall made of cellulose, which gives the plant its shape quite rigid, isn't it? Okay, but animal cells are absent. It has no cell wall. Who can make their own food? Plants. And why? Because they possess a chloroplast. So chloroplast is present in plants, but it is not present in animals. Last but not least, plant cells have a vacuole, which is quite large and permanent. Remember, we said something which is permanent is something that is always there. But in animal cells, it might have, at times, it might have small temporary vacuoles if present. Okay, they are small temporary if present, but most of the time, animal cells they do not have vacuoles. So these are. The main differences between plant and animal cells. So we've come to the end of our topic, plant and animal cells. Remember to click the subscribe button, then download the material if you find it beneficial. Please also share with friends and colleagues. We'll meet again in the next section as we continue with our main topic cells and levels of organization another ZJC concept called variation stay tuned <music>